it's Vasco from the Angular University and in this lesson we are going to start learning a completely different way of making Angular 2 forms model driven or reactive driven forms why do we need two ways of doing forms what's the difference when to use each is coming right up so first let's take the same form that we did in the template driven forms section it's just a clean HTML form that you're looking at. We're going to write it in the model driven way. The main difference towards template driven forms is that in this case, we are going to create the form and its controls programmatically. And then we're going to bind it to form elements, as opposed to using a set of directives to create implicitly behind the scenes, the form and its controls for us. But enough about the theory, let's see this in practice. To create a model driven form, the first thing that you have to do is to import the reactive form directives into your template. Otherwise, this will not work. This is turned off by default. Actually, forms are turned off by default. You have to enable them with provide forms. Now, let's create the form. Actually, let's use the form group directive to assign to this element an existing form, so we are not creating it in the template. I cannot stress this enough. So in this case, my form is the form associated to this HTML form. All the reactive form directives start with form, so we can see that they make a consistent group. Now, in our controller, let's define a variable my form, which is of type form group. That represents the form. Now, let's start our program and let's see what happens here. We have not initialized the myForm variable, so we get an error. This is expected. Again, reactive form directives bind form elements to variables that we need to initialize ourselves programmatically. So in this case, we need to initialize myForm and we are going to create a new form group instance. We're going to pass it in for the moment an empty configuration object. Let's try this out again. Now the error is fixed. We have created our first reactive form. Now let's add some controls to the form. Before we were doing that using ng-model. In this case, we are going to use the form control name directive and we are going to assign to each form control a name like the directive says. Now let's run this. What will happen? Try to guess. Of course, we get an error, because again, this directive is only binding to an existing control that we need to create ourselves. So let's do that. Let's create three form controls, one for each input field, the title, the duration and the description. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you can always subscribe to my channel for more upcoming Angular 2 tutorials. Also, have a look at the website of the Angular University to see what type of Angular 2 tutorials you find there that you might like. We are going to create the form controls inside the configuration object that was passed on to the form itself. So each property of this object, each property name is the name of the control and the value is the control itself that we are going to create with new form control and we are going to pass to each control its initial value. Let's try this out. So as you can see, the form controls have been initialized with the initial value and we have no errors on the console. So congratulations, you have created your first reactive form. Why is it called reactive? What's the point? What's the difference? We're going to start to understand that already in the next lesson, where we are going to go over validation in reactive forms. So stay tuned.